So, in two previous videos, I've talked about what Apple Music losses might be like, and also Apple's possible strategy of launching it alongside the third generation AirPods. But uh, apparently, no, uh, Apple doesn't have any sort of strategy whatsoever. They just do whatever the heck they want. To answer how and why, here's me, Clem from Future Reference. It's going to be a long video, but stay with me. I'm going to talk about absolutely everything about Apple Music today. And also one important question. What the heck is Apple even trying to do? As an intro, let's take a deep dive into what Apple Music is launching this June. There are two main things we need to consider. The first thing is spatial audio with Dolby Atmos, and the second thing is lossless audio. Let's start with spatial audio. If you followed the release of the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max, you wouldn't be totally unfamiliar with this term. Spatial audio enables dynamic head tracking that puts surround sound channels all around you in exactly the right place, even if you turn your head or move your device. And to enable sound coming from everywhere when you're turning your head from side to side, there is Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos enables artists to place individual sounds like instruments or voices around you in the sound space. And I think it's just something you have to experience yourself. I think it's worth checking it out on Dolby's website with the link I've put in the description. Now the good thing about spatial audio and Dolby Atmos is that they're pretty much available to all AirPod models or Beats headphones with the W1 or H1 chip. While spatial audio is only enabled by the specific hardware found on AirPods Pro and AirPods Max, you can pretty much experience Dolby Atmos on any sort of headphones you've got, wired or wireless. This is probably the most dynamic, most noticeable upgrade you can hear from your music when spatial audio and Dolby Atmos are launched in June. But then, the same cannot be said for lossless audio on Apple Music. At this point, let's first consider what lossless music actually is. Apple's lossless music, enabled by their Apple Lossless Audio Codec, or ALAC, preserves more detail than AAC, the current format that Apple Music uses, or MP3, the current format that Spotify uses. Apple provides several levels of lossless music for you to choose from. It starts from 16-bit at 44.1 kHz, and it goes up to 24-bit at 48 kHz. And as Apple said, for the true audiophiles out there, there's also the high-res lossless option, 24-bit at 192 kilohertz. And if you're asking, what is this mess with bit rate and hertz and sample rate, then, well, here's the irony. If you are an audiophile yourself, then you probably don't need me to drill on over details that you probably know better than me. And if you are not an audiophile, then you probably don't care about this stuff at the end of the day. So let me just put it simply, I've double checked across several websites and it's just a general consensus that the normal human being can't really discern any further improvements after 44.1 kilohertz. So that is the gold standard of CD quality. So yeah, anything beyond that, those are just for the audio files out there. But now here's the million dollar question. How do we get access to lossless audio when it's available? What equipment do we need? Well. Here's another headache we need to sort through. To access high-res lossless music at 192 kHz, you need to connect your Mac to a USB digital to analog converter, or DAC converter. Apple devices like your iPhone, iPad, or Mac will be able to play the lossless tiers, but only natively. That means your Bluetooth headphones, like if you have a pair of AirPods, will not be able to stream lossless audio over Bluetooth. And we can't really blame Apple for this. This is currently a limitation imposed by Bluetooth. With Bluetooth's limited bandwidth, Apple has to compress everything to the AAC format or advanced audio coding format just so Bluetooth can stream everything in real time. And AAC, which was designed to be a successor for MP3, is not capable of retaining all the lossless audio quality in the music. But what baffles me a bit more is that AirPods Max do not support lossless audio even when it's connected by wire. Apple explained that AirPods Max wide listening mode can only accept analog output sources and it currently does not support digital audio formats in wired mode. And there's one keyword that stands out to me, currently. To say that something currently does not support something and not straight out say it doesn't, it leaves an open door, right? It's like, hey, 
Someday, the AirPods Max might support digital audio formats and in turn enable lossless audio, but it's just that it doesn't support it right now. And if that's the case, that's totally about Apple's lack of planning. There's no way when they're designing the AirPods Max they, that they didn't know that they would venture into lossless audio. And it would be so much wiser if Apple could just include support for lossless audio and digital audio formats for the AirPods Max at least in wide listening mode. Another type of Apple products that are out of luck is the HomePods. Now, none of the HomePods will support lossless audio, and this is even more confusing because there shouldn't be any limitations with Bluetooth right there. HomePod is directly connected to the web by Wi-Fi, so it can just stream Apple Music directly from the web, and somehow HomePod is not supporting any tiers of lossless audio for Apple Music. And I don't even know what the reason might be. Is it because of the processors in the HomePods? Are the A8 and S5 chips in the two models of the HomePods too slow to process the audio? Apple didn't really bother answering why. And for customers of the HomePod, like myself, it's really confusing and discouraging because Apple went through so much. There are so many technological advances in the HomePod, like uh, a high excursion woofer, seven tweeters, spatial awareness, so on and so on, and lossless music would have been a perfect complement to the HomePod. And if you're thinking, hey, maybe the next generation of HomePod will support lossless audio, then there's not much hope in there because Apple has discontinued the HomePod and they have said that they'll be focusing their efforts on the HomePod Mini, a product that, you know, in terms of audio quality is not shabby at all, but it's just not the best that Apple can do. Simply put, the Apple Music team is like, go big or go home. We're giving our customers absolutely everything. And then the Apple hardware team is like, nah, we don't have that sort of ambition. For a company that prides themselves about their ecosystem, this is just something I least expect. This sort of disconnect between the hardware and software design. And this will stay a weird and complicated situation moving forward. But not all hope has been lost. Thanks to again, John Proser, the same amazing guy that provided us with these 2020 M2 MacBook Air renders. He mentioned it is possible that Apple will announce a new audio codec that is optimized for lossless listening over Bluetooth. This is not entirely a new concept. Sony has its own proprietary digital signal processing system called LDAC and is able to wirelessly stream lossless music at CD quality or slightly higher than CD quality. And if we're looking forward to something like that from Apple, it will be at WWDC, where all of Apple's software updates for later this year will be announced. But there's just one thing I find weird. Why would Apple split their news about lossless music into several announcements? It leaves a weird time gap for brewing a bad reputation for Apple Music. All over social media, people are just talking about how Apple's own lossless audio is not going to work on their own AirPods. That impression, it's going to stay. And worse yet, we all know how hard it is to get rid of a bad reputation. I still periodically see jokes online about the disaster that was Apple Maps and also Samsung Galaxy phones exploding. If a lossless Bluetooth codec is really part of a plan, Apple should have just waited for WWDC 2021 to announce Apple Music with lossless audio. I do see lossless audio as the way forward for the music streaming industry, considering how fiber optics and 5G are both getting more and more universal. But then Apple is playing a big bet by adding spatial audio and Dolby Atmos to the mix. It's almost like a consolation prize right now. It's like Apple saying, hmm, not everyone can get lossless audio at this point, but then not everything's lost, you can still get Dolby Atmos. Whether these new technologies will be proven essential in the music streaming industry remains to be seen until these new features on Apple Music are launched very soon in June. But what we can be sure is that Apple is bringing some price competition. By bringing new features to Apple Music at no extra charge, this will keep Tidal and Spotify on alert. Spotify is yet to announce their pricing for Spotify Hi-Fi, but Tidal is charging customers $19.99 a month for Tidal Hi-Fi, which is significantly higher than that of Apple Music at just $9.99. Even if you don't like Apple or Apple Music, you're a diehard fan for Spotify or Tidal, you should be happy about this because, well, due to the competition, maybe in the near future, Spotify and Tidal will lower their prices for their streaming services. 
And at that point, whether you're an audiophile or not, that would still be something worth celebrating. A very long video indeed, but that was absolutely everything you needed to know about Apple Music. Soon to be enhanced with Spatial Audio, Dolby Atmos, and Lossless Audio. Do remember to tell me what you think about Apple Music down below, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel for more of my tips, tricks, and reviews in the future, considering how WWDC 2021 is just around the corner. This has been Clem, thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you again real soon on Future Reference.